Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 10. And in this segment, we're going to start taking a look at some of the force balances that we've looked at and also introduce a new one uh, called the cyclostrophic balance and see how those uh, how those actually work in the natural coordinate system as opposed to the Cartesian coordinate system from which we initially derived them. But let's focus on how those force balances actually change in the natural coordinate system, which is going to be the main subject of this particular segment. So let's go ahead and start off with the very first balance we looked at in the course of this class. So let's take a look at the geostrophic balance. And you may remember that the fundamental definition of a geostrophic balance is for a perfectly straight flow pattern and it is a balance between the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force. And since that by definition is a force balance, that means that the air parcel is moving along at a constant speed. It is not changing its forward direction. And if we have a straight flow pattern, that means from our discussion of radius of curvature, a perfectly straight flow pattern means that uh, the radius of curvature goes to infinity. So here we have negative v squared uh, divided by infinity, which basically is a term that goes to zero. So we're left with only the Coriolis force in the in-hat direction, that is in the direction perpendicular to the parcel's motion, and the pressure gradient force perpendicular to the parcel's motion. But since it's by definition a balance, which means the forward speed of the air parcel is not changing, that means dv dt is equal to zero, which means this term right here, d phi ds, the pressure gradient force acting in the same direction as the air parcel's motion, or is in the same direction as the geostrophic wind, that must also be zero. So this simplifies down to uh, the geostrophic wind, f times capital V sub g, is just equal to the pressure gradient force that's acting in the perpendicular, is acting perpendicular to the air parcel's motion, or to the direction of the geostrophic wind. And this right here will, in fact, give you the, this, well, this will give you the speed of the geostrophic wind, but if you look at how the coordinate system is drawn, that will also tell you the direction of the geostrophic wind. So if you want to, you can move this Coriolis parameter f over to the right-hand side, but here, this, I left it as this, so you can see that the Coriolis force f times v, f times v, is just equal to minus d phi dn, as the Coriolis force is balanced with the pressure gradient force acting uh, perpendicular to the air parcel's motion. And if you go back to the, geostroph the lecture on geostrophic balance, you'll see that in every one of those cases, the pressure gradient force was pointing 90 degrees to the right or to the left, or actually it was, depending on which hemisphere you're in, it was actually pointing 90 degrees to the uh, velocity vector. In each one of those cases we looked at, the pressure gradient force was, ne there was no component of the pressure gradient force pointing in the same direction as the velocity of our air parcel. It was, it was never pointing in the same direction as the geostrophic wind. So this whole, uh, all the mathematics here do nicely work out. They're entirely consistent with the definitions of geostrophic wind as well as the conceptual uh, approaches that we used in the geostrophic balance. So everything works out really nicely, which is awesome. That tells us the natural coordinate system is uh, working nice and naturally. Now let's take a look at the gradient wind balance, which you may remember is the balance between pressure gradient force, Coriolis force, and centrifugal force. So this is the balance that we usually go to when we're having to deal with curved flow, and this is also a balance that you normally go to when friction is also negligible. But just like with geostrophic balance, since gradient wind balance is also a balance, that means the forward speed must be zero. So the, or excuse me, not the forward speed, the forward acceleration, the change in the forward speed must be zero. And again, if you go back to the diagrams that we looked at for gradient wind, you will see so that simplifies down to the only thing that's the only forces acting on a gradient wind balance are forces that act 90 degrees to the left or to the right of the flow pattern. And if you go back to the lecture on gradient wind balance and take a look at those graphics, you will see none of the forces on that diagram point in the same direction as the air parcel's motion, as the motion of, it doesn't point in the same direction as the wind vector. So again, this is nice and consistent with some of the conceptual models that we built when we defined geostrophic wind as well as the gradient wind balance. And this right here is going to be something we talk a little bit and uh, we discuss in more depth in also the next lecture. Uh, take a look at the, we're actually going to solve this expression for the gradient wind balance and take a look at how, or what theoretically is possible in the atmosphere as far as uh, gradient wind flow patterns are concerned. But that'll be a topic for the next lecture. And then finally, this thing called cyclostrophic balance, which is a balance between the centrifugal force and the pressure gradient force. So the cyclostrophic balance assumes a negligible Coriolis force. So we just assume that this term right here, this Coriolis term, is small. 
And this is a pretty valid assumption if you're working on, say, a small time scale or a small space scale. So you may remember back from the lecture on Coriolis force, Coriolis force is only significant on significant scales of time and space. If we have a small scale of time and or a small scale of space, Coriolis force can be neglected. So we only have to worry about centrifugal force and the pressure gradient force. And also, just like the two previous two balances we looked at, cyclostrophic balance is also a force balance, meaning the forward acceleration of the air parcel is zero. So that just distills down to the centrifugal force being equal to the pressure gradient force. V squared over R is equal to the pressure gradient force on the right-hand side. And again, the only forces that are present are acting 90 degrees to the left or to the right of an air parcel's motion. So that's going to do it for the force balances in natural coordinates. And in the final segment, we'll take a look at an exercise that will uh, sort of test your understanding, but it will also illustrate why cyclostrophic balance can actually work. So with that, I will see you all in the final segment of Lecture 10.